Hello, everybody. Uh, we are going to start a webinar in a few moments from now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another webinar uh, part series of uh, up to date about the post processors. And uh, this will be the part three. And uh, my name is Daniel. And today the presenter will be uh, Vokashi Nikulic. And uh, before uh, he opened his uh, presentation, and uh, I'm going to uh, share you a few things and to say thank you to all who contributed the uh, uh, in this um, on this uh, webinars, okay. So first, I'm going to show you. You know, as the previous webinars, we are also uh, are recording also this one and uh, the recordings. You can all, of course, you can find on solicam.com. And uh, many of you also ask us, okay, where you, you can uh, find this, and uh, you can go to the webinar section over here. You can go to the webinars recording. You can go to the latest webinars. And here you will be able to find also the, the video. You can download them. You can go to the and download the webinar content, uh, anything that you need. Uh, of course, like with the previous one, I can just click on it. And uh, don't my my uh, uh, suggestion to all of you is to not play inside the Solicam website, but to go to the YouTube over here. Just jump over there. And like with the previous, you will be able to see the timeline here and you can just easily jump to the particular subject that we actually discuss, just clicking on it and it will jump there. Now, in addition, I, I promised uh, last time that I will put all the uh, SolidCam settings application together with uh, the presentation tool that I also used in my uh, part one webinar. You can find the links here okay these links will be available on all videos that we are uh, uploading in the future and um and that's it uh the few things about the the, the forum itself forum.solicam.com you can go to the section of the post processors where the same links you will be able to find also in this uh, topic over here but we also um up uh, you know for all of you who are you know, uh, who these webinars are pretty advanced. Uh, we also cover, you know, all our webinars. We are putting in a specific topic that you can see over here. And here you can see all recorded webinars that we have done in SoyCam so far. And the one that we are now covering it at the very bottom of it. Uh, besides of that one, uh, we have here up to date post process of webinar series where I also ask in the part one, part two, and now in part three, for any kind of questions that you have, guys, if you have any particular subject uh, that uh, what you want to be covered besides of the mentioned one, please write us down here. I can see that many of you activate. I'm really glad that this works very well. So just please don't be shy, you know, just uh, go ahead there and uh, write us your suggestions, comments uh, there below. Uh, of course, uh, also a small detail with all of these subjects, you also have the hyperlink over here, so it will also guide you towards the uh, uh, recordings itself. That's it uh, from my side. I will now uh, give uh, uh, the, uh, I will make a presenter, Vukashin. He will be the, the main presenter today, as I said. So Vukashin, uh, good luck. Show us what you got. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I hope everybody can see my screen and hear me. Uh, 
as Daniel said, you can check the forum for the topics we'll be covering today, but also I would like to summarize it in a uh, quick, in a minute. So we will be talking about the changes in arcs, new variables, some uh, some main uh, differences between the older versions, mainly 2020 and now 2021. We'll be covering the compensation and also the get new get functions that are used to uh, handle holders, handle uh, their connection points, stations, and and uh, etc. So I would like to start off with the uh, with a simple topic that is the approximate arcs by lines. Um, many of you already know about this option, when we use it, uh, why we use it. It's it can be used on machines that. Uh, mainly don't support arcs, uh, but you handle that by DVMID. Some machines don't uh, handle, cannot handle arcs in 3D, so you would like to turn this on. On Milton machines that uh, don't have the interpolation cycles, they cannot uh, do the C-axis milling with the fourth axis with the arcs. So uh, any of those uh, cases use this option. Now, uh, in the past, we could not. Uh, see if this option is turned on or turned off, except for the uh, uh, appearance of the ARC procedure. But now, if I generate trace 5 and search for that function, so we are in channel 2, we don't need the channel 2, we need the channel 1, I will search for the, uh, not that, but ARC approximate, okay, here it is. Now, I'd like to mention that this uh, it is in the start of job procedure and also in call proc procedure if the procedures are turned off. So you can see arc approximate, the value is zero. That is because we did not turn it on. Now you can say uh, if it is a particular type of job, if it's a job that doesn't support the arcs, you can say if arc approximate is zero, please print a note to the CAM programmer, please turn on arcs in job this and this. So that is one of the use cases. Now, of course, I will close this. I will turn it on. I will say, okay, it's 0 0.01. If I, okay, I save it. Again, trace five, channel one, okay. If I search now, let's search for start of job. Okay, start of job. Let's go to the bottom of the start of job. And here it is, arc approximate is 0 0.01. So, Maybe you need the this value and uh, knowing of the of the that the function is turned on. Maybe you want to turn on the smooth function. You can say if arc approximate is not equal zero, turn on the smooth function with this torrent, and that would be it. Uh, it is a often requested uh, variable, and now you have it. Uh, I'm sure that you will know how to use it. Now, the next thing are some uh, changes between the generation of ARC in the uh, SolidCam Solid 2020 and 2021. Now, if I open the VMID, and if I go to the controller definition, ARC execution definition, and many of you may notice that we are missing an option. Be below this option, there was another one. Now, if I open, the uh, post processor for the same machine, but in the 2020 version. And if I let me put this down, go to the controller definition, arc execution, you can see that we have arcs in main planes only. Now, this is removed from 2021 and it is operating by the next rules. Now, let me show you an algorithm. So, First question is, can we define the working plane? Uh, how, do, how do you know that? Well, if you have defined the uh, tilting plane definition inside the VMID, then you can define a working plane. It, yes, gets the arc and trace. If it is no, but the arc is one of in one of the main planes of the submachine coordinate system or the virtual Mac, uh, then it can generate trace, again, generate arcs in trace or generate only lines. Now, how can you know if you have a working plane defined or if the arc is in one of the main planes? Well, let me first explain what is a 
some machine coordinate system or uh, what is a virtual Mac. Now, if I go to the SolidCam help, I, if I search for virtual Mac, the last uh, topic will tell you the best. It is the correct definition. So virtual Mac is when you take the coordinate system uh, of the submachine and put it in the origin of the job Mac. If I show you that on our part, if uh, I open the setup, in setup, sorry, we have our Mac one position one. If I generate the machine preview, you can see that this is our virtual Mac, okay? That is our virtual Mac. So it's the coordinate system of the sub machine that is taken into the Mac one position one uh, origin point. Now, if I were to open the operation that I've shown here and gen generate the machine preview for it, you can see the following. First, this is the Mac one position one and it is oriented as in the setup that I have shown. But we have an option here that shows the position coordinate system. And you can see the coordinate system of the position that is used. And please notice that the orientation of the coordinate system here is not the same as in the Mac one. So it means you have a uh, tilted plane defined. So here we will, of course, get the arcs and they will be in the X, Y plane. Now, if uh, the tilted plane plane is not defined, uh, the position coordinate system would be in the same point, but it would maintain the orientation of the original Mac. So that is how you can uh, quickly and easily check it inside the solid cam machine preview. Everything is kinematic and you should know by looking at it what to expect inside G-code. So if I go back to the picture, so can we define the working plane? You can check by the preview. If we can, you will get arcs and trace. If you cannot, uh, but the arc is in one of the main planes of the original coordinate system that I've shown of the virtual Mac, then you will again get arcs and trace. If not, so it can with, will automatically uh, approximate arc by lines. And that would be it for that. Now, uh, what's, what's next and what's changed inside arcs? Uh, let me load a comparison file between the uh, SolidCAN 2020 and 2021. So I have it here. I will just search for the ARC procedure. And let me zoom in a bit. So this is the ARC. And the first thing you may see missing is a line in the 2020 version. So the left one is 2020 right one is 2021. You see there's a line missing. Uh, this is a new variable that I will explain in a minute, but uh, the other change is that we have uh, added change bits to the post coordinate set and L post coordinate set. So X center relative, Y center, Z center relative will have change bits inside uh, 2021. Also the L center uh, and L center relative will have change bits. So this is just to prevent the printing of the non-changed or zero value uh, variables. And a new variable that it is that is added is the uh, center absolute. Now you may say, but we already had had that. And yes, it is right above, but this is an arc generated for the turning job. And you can see that we have X and Y center, but turning jobs are done in the uh, ZX plane. And that is why it is developed uh, to have the uh, a new variables in order not to uh, break posts with uh, the old ones. And I will show you how what was the logic behind the X and Y center, even though it was in the ZX plane. Now, if I go back to SolidCam, if I open a turning job and I would go to the plane, now let me use this, minimize it. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at the 2021 version. So like I said, the job is in the ZX plane, but if you take a look at the coordinate system below, this is how SolidCam uh, looks at this job. 
uh, I don't say that this is a, this is a coincidence that it uh, matched up with the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system, but it's a perfect representation of how SOLIDCAM looks at it. So you can see uh, Z axis is uh, matching the X axis. So we are getting the X minus 25.6. It is matching the X one, the, yeah, the Z value, but it should be here. And this is why the new variable works. So, and also the uh, X axis that is inside the real job is looked at as Y. So Y value is in the X center absolutely. So uh, with, with it like this, you don't have to think about if you are in turning job, if you are in milling job, you know that you, you will always get the correct values. So we did not remove the old ones, we just add a new one, so uh, there's, no, uh, there's no need to update old posts. And one thing I would like to mention also about ARCs is that uh, it is being worked on to add ARC support to the uh, Turbo operation. So Turbo HSM and HSR are actively being worked on to add ARC, uh, ARC support since this is uh, much requested uh, from our sellers and clients. Now that would be it for the ARCs. Uh, I would like now to transition to the changes inside the compensation. Now, the first uh, change that uh, that happened, not between 2021 and 2020, but uh, after the 2021 release is, uh, some of you probably noticed that uh, the side O uh, variable that was responsible for the compensation inside the Opus set was not working after the release of uh, 2021. It is fixed now in 2021 SP2 and later. And you should know that uh, if you had any workarounds or anything that was uh, handling that bug, you can remove them and just insert the side O inside, in, uh, inside the compensation procedure and it will work fine. Now, let me just check if I have compensation turned on inside this operation. I do. Now, let me generate it and try to explain. Uh, another change that happened. So this is inside the channel one. Okay. So this one, I will close this and this. And let's search for the compensation procedure. Here it is. Now, as, as you probably know, we have side, side O, and we also have a new variable. It is side H. Um, what is what is uh, its main purpose? Well, side O and side H uh, variables are very similar. Uh, both of them reference the virtual Mac or the submachine coordinate system, like I said. So each of them will take a look at, uh, at that coordinate system. As you know, probably side O is used when you have a tilting plane definition. So if you are working in plane, let's say it's a table-table machine, you have the uh, plane rotation cycle, you have rotated the plane, you are in the X, uh, X Y plane, you will use side. Maybe you are uh, on a Milton machine with the B axis, like this uh, end takes from the example is, okay, again, you can rotate the plane and you can use the side. But if you are working on a Milton machine with a rotary turret, or a uh, Swiss type machine, or just a regular turning machine, you should you should use the side O, because it is referencing that submachine coordinate system, and uh, is always relative to it. Now, south side H can be used for the same purpose, but side H has one difference between the side O that I will show you on another example. Now, let me close this project and let me open a different one. Now, I will transition to a Haas uh, free access milling machine, but with an angular head. Now, this is where the side edge can be, uh, can be useful. Now, let me just check the VMID first. Let's check the tilted plane definition, and it is set to none. Of course, it's a free access machine, it just has the angular head. 
So I will close, yes, I will save, even though I didn't change anything. And let me load a operation. I think it's this one. Yeah, this one can be used or maybe, yeah, this one is even better. So I have this operation and it's in a position. Now, firstly, let's do, like I said, let, let me show you an example. How can you ch check if you have a tilted plane definition? We have our angle ahead. Let me zoom in and let me show the position. And here we go. Z, Z, X, X, and Y, they are all in the same direction. The origin point has changed, but the uh, orientation is uh, exactly the same. And that is how you know that you don't have a tilted plane definition defined. So here you can expect everything that is uh, related to other coordinate sets, sets that are not elbows or poles. So let me show you uh, what is shown now inside the uh, compensation. Let's generate trace five again. We have only one channel here, so let's go to comp. Here it is. So you will see they all have values. They are referencing uh, the orientation of the coordinate system uh, is the same, so they are uh, showing the same value. Now let's go to a different operation. I will generate both of them. So we have an operation here, I think. Yes. So this operation is at a 45 degree angle. So it will uh, not be in any of the main planes. Now let me just select both of them. And again, generate trace five. Okay. Let's search for compensation. Okay, like we shown, it is side left. It is turning it off after the operation. But take a look at this. We have errors. Why? Well, our machine cannot define uh, tilting of the plane and uh, compensation cannot be done if it is in, uh, if it is not in a plane. So we get errors. Um, the value of the error should be minus 9999. So if you, you can search your compensation procedure, if error, uh, if side, any of the sides is equal to this, then display a warning to the CAM programmer to turn off the compensation. Maybe just don't print out the compensation, but uh, notify the user or something like that. So let me add uh, the tilting of the plane to the pot processor, even though the machine cannot support it. Let me add it just to show you the difference. So I will just transition from one to another. So it will automatically assign a order or rotation. I will save it. Now let's generate for both of these. I go G code, generate. Let's use trace five again. Search for compensation. Okay. Again, we are in a, in a main plane, so we get the values for everyone. This is the turning off of the compensation. And now you see side and side O have become uh, defined or they got a value, but side H got an error. Why is that? Well, this is the only difference between side O and side H is that uh, the error for side H is also displayed if, even though if we have tilted plane definition, but we are not in the main plane. So side H will only have a value inside the uh, inside the inside the main plane. Let's say like that of the submachine coordinate system or the virtual Mac. Now, where you can use this? Let's say you have a table table machine, and you have the tilting of the plane and you rotate the part, use the tilting uh, of the of the part, but still are not inside one of the main planes. Then only side H will tell you that. Let's say you're using an angular head on a, a milling machine that has the tilting of the plane and you are your position doesn't end up in one of the main planes, you will use side H to check for that. 
and that's the main purpose. That's the main difference between side O and side H. Otherwise, they work identically. Again, the error value for you to check is minus 9999. Uh, please note that this value is in the DV and should be in the next version. Now, let me close this code. Let me uh, return the tilting of the plane to the non-defined. And that would be it for the compensations. Now, the next topic is probably more interesting to you. Uh, because now we are transitioning to the get functions. The first get function I would like to show you, and I will open the GPP tool help. Let me go back from here. It is the getting the number of components. Now, what does this function do? It shows us, or it counts, the number of two components uh, inside a tool assembly. So, uh, let's say, like in in this example, we have the cutter number one, shank number two, holder number three. Now you see that tool item is skipped. Uh, I would like to note that this uh, function is extended and it has another parameter that tells you if the tool number uh, tool item is counted or not. And I'm using the DV version and I will show you how it works. And it should be inside the documentation and also the uh, official version uh, by the next release. So we have one, two, three. If we are counting this four and then station five, or if we are not, then just four items. Now let me open solid cam and let's, let's go to the toolkit. I won't use this one, but let's use tool 15 and let me open the advanced view and let's count. So we have the cutter or the drill. So one, two, three, four, five, six, or five if we are not counting this. So let me show you how this works and that would be the easiest way to, to do it. Um, let me go back to help. Let me just copy all of this since it will work. Uh, let's open the post processor. We use tool 15, okay. Yes, I want to save the changes. Uh, let me open the post. Okay. Now, Haas. Okay. I will delete this since I played a bit with it. Okay. Now, uh, I have copied it from the help. Yep. Let's go to the post processor. Let me add a separator so we know where to look for. Open the apostrophes a bracket let's go like this just i will duplicate it and let's paste it. since i pasted it from the help file it is adding some lines let's format and okay but the one i've copied has only one parameter and if i try to generate now i will get an error so i will add a comma and i will say zero that will say, okay, don't count the tool item, or I can say one. Let's go with zero. Okay. And it will say, get number of tool components, assign that number to this, and that's it. So it will print out number of tool components for tool number. The tool we chose is this. Now let me save this. Let's go to solid cam. We can close this. And we use tool number 50 so it is this one and let's go j code generate okay and here it is number of tool components for tool 15 is five like we counted it is five without the tool item and six with it so this is the use of that function now how can you use it practically well let's say uh you are working on important uh mode parts and you know that your assemblies need to have holders, shanks, and everything in order to have the correct output, in order to have the uh, correct simulation. So you can check with this. You know that uh, you have the station, you have the cutter. So that's two elements. If you're counting the tool, uh, 
two element also, so that's three uh, minimum. So if the number is less than, let's say four, you should know that your CAM programmer forgot to include the holder, the shank, or adapter, everything like that. So you can print out a message, number of tool components is less than, let's say four, please check your tool assemblies or something like that. Now, the second use of it can be uh, if you overlap the this function with another function that I want to show you. So right below it, it is get tool component name. Now it will count, uh, uh, it will name all of the components inside that tool assembly. Again, this function is also extended. It has another parameter that is the same as uh, in the previous function and it will either count this or not. So I will go to it. So let's copy all of it again. Okay. And here it is using a while loop in order to print out all the uh, elements, or you can use just a number of the tool. I mean, let's say I want to use the element number two, you can use that also. So let me copy it to here. And again, we have empty lines. So I will sort this out. Okay, okay. And let me format it. Now, again, we have the number of tool components. I will delete this here. We are getting the number of tool components also here. So that will be removed. Let me just remove this. So this is the first function and this is the second one. Now, again, I just need to remember that I need to add this. So we haven't counted the tool, uh, tool one, tool item, let's now count it out. So let's set here one, I will save it. And let's go back to SolidCam. Let's generate G code. And here it is. So as I have transferred to one, it is now counting the, the tool element also. So it's six. And here is the cutter, the shank, one part of the holder, the adapter of the holder, the tool item and the station. Now, let me just leave a quick note if uh, I close this and if we open the toolkit and here is the tool 15, you can rename this. So this is a example tool item. Okay, I will save and exit. I will go back to the operation, generate the G code again, and let's see what we got. So trace five, And here you see, we have the example tool, tool item. Many of you didn't know probably that you can rename it and we got some questions. So I wanted to know that. And that's it. Now where you can use this function, let's say you want to rule out only the name of the example tool item. So you know that the tool item comes always after the station. You can say, okay, maximum number of tool components is six. That is my station. I want to uh, print out the name of the element before that station. So let's do this. It's nice and easy. All right. Now, how can we edit this? We don't need a while loop anymore. Okay. We don't need this. We don't need this. Okay. Sorry. Now we are just getting the number, the name of the component. We don't need this either because we want to say exactly which component we want. So let's say I want the component that is maximum number of two components minus one. That would be example to like. And let's say this tool item name is, and I will delete everything and this, okay and it should print out the component name. Let me just format it. Let's generate the G code and hope that we didn't make some small mistake. Nope, everything's good. So tool item name is example tool item. And this is one of the many use cases. You can have a million of them. You can be creative, make tool lists, make uh, whatever you want. And the most important thing is that this is a get function. Get functions work anywhere inside the code. So if you decide that you want to print 
in start of job, something that is printing printed after start of job, you can have the data. I, for the uh, for other things uh, without the get functions, you had to uh, you had to be creative and uh, lose much much more time and type much more code in order to get to the same result. So this is a nice and easy way to do it. Now, staying in the uh, topic of get tool functions and holders and similar things, I want to show you the next uh, function. So if we go to the tool help, we have the base geometry uh, options. Now, what do they do? So we can have get the base geometry name. Now, first you may ask, what is the base geometry? Well, base geometry is a holder element that is, as the name says, a mark as base geometry. Now, let me open the toolkit. Let's stay at this example of tool number 15. Now, here I have my base geometry selected. You can find it in the properties page and only if you are in the holder item. If I go to the shank, there's nothing. So, only the uh, holders. Now, let me go back to the help file. What does this function return? It, uh, the base geometry name tells us the name of the joint closest to the tool on a holder that is marked as base geometry. So this can confuse you. So you have a holder marked, uh, you have a few holders marked as base geometry and the joint name that will be used is on the holder that is uh, closest to the tool. Now this would be much more easier to show an example. So if I click for an example, it leads us to the other base geometry function. It says get base geometry position. What it does, we get an X, Y, and Z value from the spindle uh, tool station to the uh, closest joint to the tool uh, on a holder marked as base geometry. Again, this is the example I'll be also using. So we have two elements as holders and uh, they are both marked as base geometry. So it can use the joint one of the uh, IDX geometry or the joint 007 of the TA uh, geometry. Now, but it will use uh, this one because it is closest to the tool. So this joint is the joint 007 and it is closest to the tool. So we get the distance from here to the uh, tool station. Now, again, everything is much uh, prettier with an example. So I will copy everything and go back to the post processor. Now, let me just clean this up a bit. I will duplicate this line and let's paste it. Let's clean it up. So we have this. Okay. Now, also you can see here that we have the joint name. So we can check which joint is used as base geometry in this uh, measuring. So the function is as in the example, we'll have result. So if the result is one, the function was successful. If not, you'll get an error and uh, an error message. But let's see, we have a tool tag. So it's a unique tool number. We have three variables that will store the distance and later the printing of the distances. If I format it, it's all okay. I just need to call this procedure inside start to job or anywhere that I would like. Again, this is a get function. It will work with wherever inside the uh, generation procedure. So call, get the user base geometry, and let's go back to SolidCAM. Now, how do I know what should we get? I will close this. So both of the holders will be marked as base geometry. So if I focus, we have the upper part and its distance from the station is 77. Okay, and we have this one and its distance in Z is 156 and in X is 70. Now, please note that this is a positive value but the X 
looking at the coordinate system of the station should be negative. And let's see what do we get as a result. So I will just save and exit. I will go back to this operation, generate the G-code, and here we go. So distance minus 70. Like I said, it is looking at the coordinate system of the uh, station. So in Y we have zero, and in Z it is the uh, 77 that we had on the first joint and 156 that we had on the second joint. So it adds it up in order to tell us how far is the uh, joint from the uh, station coordinate system. Now we got the name, it's a test joint, it, or in the example in the help file is joint 007. And you also get the name and uh, how this function works. Now, again, some of you may ask, why do I need this? Well, uh, on Angular heads, uh, some, machine cannot, some machines cannot offset their uh, tools in free access, only in Z. Now, maybe you need to know how, uh, how far is the uh, tool mounting point from the station coordinate system. Now, this function will return. But then also show the a function that shows us the exact uh, distance from the tooltip to the station coordinate system also, and it can be used as well. Um, that would be it for the base geometry functions. I would now like to uh, cover the important uh, variable that was added for the Milton machines, for Swiss type machines, and also for the support of Angular heads. Uh, that function is called the uh, all machine plane. Now, it is being used for some time now, and it's basically the machine plane inside that uh, Opus coordinate set or the submachine coordinate system, according to the submachine coordinate system. Now, uh, how you can check it? Well, let's say, uh, as we said, this machine doesn't have a tilting of the plane. Now, if we check the machine preview, and if I show the position, it will show that we are uh, inside the Z, uh, Y plane. Now, if we had tilting of the plane, this, position, this Z uh, direction would be as X. So let me show you that. So I will again define it, just toggle this back and forth. Okay, let's uh, show machine preview. Okay, and now if I zoom in, if I show it, now, if you take a look at this, our machine plane uh, is XY. But if you take a look at the uh, submachine coordinate system or the virtual Mac, in this case, and if I generate G-code, we can check this. Okay, and now let's search for, uh, let's go with all machine plane. Now we have the rotate to the rotate to plane, or you can find it inside the start to job. But like I said, machine plane is XY. And you can see that here. But the all machine plane is YZ. So it is a reference to the virtual Mac that has the orientation of the submachine coordinate system. And this function is useful, okay, for the angle heads, but the, the much better use case scenario uh, and the use for the, where it uh, really saves us some time is the Milton machines and the Swiss type machines. Now I will close this. I will just revert back to the non-kinematic, non-rotating uh, plane. And let me uh, load another project that is a Swiss type project. Now, on these machines, they for sure don't have tilting of the plane for the linear holders. Milton machines don't have the tilting of the plane for the uh, tar the tools on the radial turrets. So you need this variable in order to show uh, to know the correct plane. If I open the post processor for this machine. Okay, I'm here in the machine plane. You can see, okay, for turning, we have the plane that is 18 always, but for milling, you have only uh, 
let's say seven lines of code that tell you what is the machine plane so all machine plane is equal x y it is 17 y z 19 z x 18 and that's it so you can disregard this this is the saving of the values or for if the rotary uh rotary option is turned on but if i load the old uh post and search for the same user machine plane so let me find the user machine plane okay so it is here okay it's always the last one for sure yeah so this is the procedure now if you take a look at this part of the code it's not much longer and it's it has a different logic it, it is depending on the submachine or the tool direction in station now if i search for this here it is we have a whole procedure that tells us what is the tool direction in station and what's the angle around the specific axis so you had to know if the tool is rotating rotated around a specific axis then it is one plane if it's uh, a different value then it's the other plane but it is if you agree with me this is much more elegant much more simple and much more easier to check you if you check back on where we found this variable it says if it if the value you need to know that this is the y-axis and if it's not 90 then it's tool is not mounted inside the, uh, in the z direction you had to know much more and to concentrate to uh it was harder to debug opposite to this which is just seven lines of code simple easy to read and easy to figure out now uh as i said all machine plane reference to the virtual mac and the submachine coordinate system and as we were at the handling of the uh of the uh, planes and everything inside the Swiss type machines, I would like to show you another useful function and show you the brochure for a star machine. So I will go to the read mode and we have the star machine from the example I was showing. And if I scroll down, you will see uh, this type of holder. So. I'm not sure how well you can see, but this holder is a multi-tool holder and it mounts to one tool station. So let me scroll down. You can see this holder is now uh, a radial holder. And you can see the example they have. We have two holders here, but what's the main catch? Well, they are mounted on a single uh, tool station. Now you have the tool number, but you also have the subtool uh, number. And if you check this, this is the example of that holder. And we have the holder that is mounting, mounted on the T34 station, but it has three substations. Now it has the station number 21, 22, 23. And also it can be for main spindle or the back spindle. How do we call this type of tool? Well, you need to call T34 that will align it in Y axis and then 23 that set tells us what substation is being used and it knows how far it should go down in z in x now if i open the i uh let me open the toolkit and let me close this hide this and open the machine preview and you can see right here now if i just call the tool as t3400 the machine will just go in y-axis and align itself with the guide bush. So this is what you get. And it doesn't know which subtool item is used. Now, once you call T34, let's say 23, which is at the top, it will use its x-axis and then align itself as it should. Now, how this was done inside uh, SOLIDCAN 2020, you had the uh, tool station here that the tool number 34 that was a dummy uh, tool station to mount the holder to and then you had a station for each of the subtool items now in 2020 we only have one station as you can see here this is only one station now let me yeah it's advanced view but uh subtool items are handled with uh, a get function so 
let me minimize this and you can see i have our holder here and let me show this preview and you can see it has six joints three for each spindle so we have 21a 22a and 23a these are on the left side and the b index is on the right side now how do we know on which one of them the tool is mounted where well if i go to the help if i find is joint name exist now what does this uh, function do it returns the uh, operation if a specific joint name uh, is in a selected tool holder system so i will tell you for the tool number 34 do we have a joint that is uh, txx 21a and the function will return true or false now according to that you can you can implement it in mainly the swiss type machines you can uh just be careful to name your uh joints as uh, you implemented them in the gpp or you need to teach the your technician or the guy that is training the clients or the client itself how to name the joints when creating their new uh, stl holders but after that you have a system that is easy and simple to uh to handle the substation numbers inside the gpp so let me show you how it works i will just copy the uh format and let me open the post let's close this so here it's t34 so it's the first operation open the post processor so we are in the machine plane i know that the change tool procedure uh is handling this and here it is so let me just zoom in a bit we have the user change tool and this is the tool number so we're using tool position in tarot to get the tool number and uh, multiplying it by 100 why we are doing this well to get the 3400 output so we know 3400 0, 0. now let me just generate g code and let's see what we get right now if i generate g code for the first one okay let's go with trace five okay this is the channel two we don't need that this is the channel one so let's scroll down and here it is we have the tool number 3400 we don't have the substation number and the uh linear turret will just align itself in the y-axis now we need to implement the substation number also the wire offset here is called number t34 so we need to change that also if i go back to the post processor we need to add here something like let's say sub substation number but let me delete this and format it properly first we will need the get function to get that substation number so i will create a procedure let's call it user uh, substation number okay and we need an argument why well we need to feed it uh, feed the value out of the uh, procedure so i will call it a local il uh, substation uh, number and i will declare it inside the change tool so i will go with local integer and use this so and also we will use it here now i need to declare a procedure and it's a, a argument called so okay let's go here let's go and p but we need to say it is an integer so I have copied the format let's go back and let's say if is joint m exists with a tool tag in this case it will be uh tint 34. now we need to set the string of the joint the joint was let's it t xx 
21, let's use A for this case. So if inside this uh, joint, inside this uh, tool assembly, there's a joint name like this, let's say equal true, then let's say that the IL uh, substation number, if that the IL substation number equals 21. And that would be it. I did not say and if, but and if. Okay. Let's generate G code and see what do we get. Okay. Again, we were going to go with way zero because we just need to see the output. Okay. Here is the channel one. And as I said, 21. So how it is working? It is going inside this procedure and saying, okay, I found this joint. So for this joint, we is the substation number 21. And then it is adding that number to the 3,400 that we had without this. So it is 3,400 plus 21. So T34 substation 21. Now we also need it for the uh, where offset. So here is the, okay, here is the where number. So if it's turning, it's not turning for us, it's milling. And let's say if, oh, sorry, let's copy this one. If the substation number, let's say is not equal zero. So we have a multi-tool holder. Let's say that the, I will duplicate this line, move it up that the where number is equal to the substation number. Else, it is equal to the D offset that was used before. So, and if, let's save it and let's see what we got. Again, generating for the same. Again, we're going to be using trace zero. And let's see the result. Okay, let's go down. Here it is T3421. And here we have the uh, where offs. Now let me check if I did not close the previous one. Yeah, I did not. So we got the station number, but the where offset was still 34. Now let me close all of these windows and just, if you want, you can go and just copy this because for other station numbers, we would get an error or a blank spot so I will call this one two three four five six let me just format it and say 21 b it's still 21 22 a would be 22 22 22 b also 22 23 a and 23 b so that would be it I can set this like this, so it's prettier. And that's it. If I generate for any other operation now, see these are all uh, on T34. You can see this is the same tool, but this one is not the same. So we should expect a different substation number. Let's generate for this one. We have implemented the logic for the whole uh, multi-tool holder. And let's check if the output is correct. Now, Please note that you should uh, know which holders are used so you can handle the joint numbers. But let's check. So here it is, 22, 22. And that's it. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, you can post your questions uh, in the forum and uh, that will be it from my side. Thank you. I will cut back to Daniel. Wonderful presentation, Lukashen. Thank you very much. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed in this um, uh, webinar, uh, part three. Um, I would just want one thing, uh, Lukashen, I noticed, you know, that um, in the one uh, get function, get uh, components name, uh, Lukashen talked about additional parameters, if it's zero or if it's one. Guys, if you're trying to, 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 tr uh, to, to generate this um, a get function in the 
uh, current official version of SP3 Hotfix 1, you will get an error message. Of course, this is still in the development version. So with upcoming Hotfix or SP4, uh, this uh, get function will work uh, accordingly, okay? And with that being said, um, thank you again for joining us today and see you in seven days again. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.